Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Today I have for you five rules that I want you to start breaking to improve your boxing skills. People are gonna tell you when you first start, you have to do it this way, but you really don't. And learning to make the change and develop your skills in these incorrect ways is actually going to improve your skill level in sparring or competing dramatically. Now there are absolutely some basics which you have to maintain to keep yourself safe. For instance, when somebody says, let's say you're gonna throw a jab cross, somebody says, hand to your cheek, hand to your cheek. That's a good rule of thumb to follow and you generally don't wanna break that unless you get crazy high level and your hands are down here and maybe you're just pounding in shots and you see that hand lower. We see guys like Pacquiao do this and he gets away with it, but I would say for the most part, it's a very good idea to keep those hands up nice and high as you throw. But there are still other things that we can alter, that we can break rules of, which will actually improve our skill level. So let's move in to point number one. And that is the transition between your jab and your lead hook. If I was teaching somebody who is brand new, I would tell them the hand that goes out has to connect back to the jaw before you throw the left hook. I would say you have to do that because if you do not, you're leaving your head too exposed. If you were seeing it from the side, it should look like this. We're right in this position, we come out, back, and then we land that shot. But anybody who gets better and better will note that taking the time to draw back, load those shoulders, will slow up the process between the jab to the hook. If you want to be quick, you sometimes can just go one, pull back halfway and come right to the hook. The speed difference if done full speed is, this is correctly, the correct way. Or we can go, and you can see on that one, I only pull back part way. The reason this works so well is when I throw my jab up the center, somebody's gonna either block or turtle shell, which exposes the side of their head. So you have to get that jab out, pull back and get around really fast before they can make that transition from one to two. That's a fast motion. You have to beat it. So break this rule, try it out, make sure your chin stays tucked, make sure your other hand is really tight and maybe even slightly rotated to the front. And now when I do that transition, if I keep my shoulder nice and high, I am still very safe, even though I'm breaking that rule about drawing the jab back to the jaw before executing the hook. The next point, which I wanna show you, and I want you to break this rule, is how we execute the uppercut. Again, I'm gonna show you the correct way to do it, and then I'm gonna show you why I want you to break it and how we're gonna break it. So let's say I was going from a jab to an uppercut. I would teach somebody, the jab comes out, you bend your knees, your hand stays tight to your jaw, and then using your legs, you execute into the uppercut. But what we actually can see people do very often is to drop this hand down and come straight in. This means that I don't have to utilize my legs in the same way, but it also means that because I'm not going one, two, I can get that punch off so much faster. If I keep my hand right here, and then I go to throw, there's gonna be that extra lag time. So assuming that you've already recognized your opponent shells up, they're not big on counter punching, and you know you can get two quick shots off very fast, you can actually let the hand drop and throw from there, or cross into the uppercut. And we will see people like Canelo utilize this so darn well, he doesn't step in and go, hoo, hoo, hoo. he just comes, boom, hand comes way down and then he smokes in his uppercut. The majority of the time when he lands his uppercuts, which are lethal, he starts with his hand down at his hip. If you're new, you don't wanna start practicing going huh, 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 and going right from your hip because that means you'll do it all the time. The muscle memory will sink in. So you start off one, two, keeping your head protected. But now, once you can do that, you can break the rule without always reverting back to dropping your hand to your hip. This is a very effective, dangerous way to land one of the scariest punches in fight sports. The next rule that I want to talk about breaking is a little bit controversial in the sense that when people throw hooks, 
Some gyms will tell you thumb up, some gyms will tell you thumb in, some gyms will even tell you thumb down. And you probably at your gym already have a way that you're supposed to do it, the correct way. But I want you to recognize that you can break that. Number one, because everybody is comfortable in a different position. Myself, I feel most comfortable hitting a hard bag like this, but I do this as well. And I use this because it allows me to change my range. So instead of going here, when I start elongating, it's very difficult to land with the knuckles. I'll sometimes turn over. So now I am still landing with the knuckles while still executing the hook. Don't get stuck up in this thumb has to be up, thumb has to be down situation and only throw one way. Break the rule of your gym and make sure that you try both versions, see what you feel is most appropriate for you, and then hopefully start switching up from one to the other. Like I said, I've knocked people down with this, but I've also knocked people down with this in fights strictly because I use them in the appropriate moment and I don't limit myself to just one version of the way you're supposed to do things. The next one that I wanna talk about breaking a rule of is the double jab. If we were gonna execute a double jab, one, back to the jaw, two. Now, we already very similarly talked about the jab to hook, so I'm not gonna dwell on this too much, but I wanna talk about the setup. What executing a double jab incorrectly can do for your follow-up. So instead of going one, two, back to the head, thinking, okay, I'm throwing both those shots with the intent to damage, what you can actually do is go one, draw back a quarter of the way, and then pop a second one out. You're lacking power on the second one, and your head is a little bit more exposed because you're not rechambering, but you can blind your opponent's vision. And if I come straight to you guys, you can see one, two, gives you that time in between on the rechamber to refocus. If I just go like that, you're gonna have that hand right in your face and it becomes difficult to see what the other hand is going to do. If I see somebody draw up on the double jab with their arms, then I know the body's open, pump, pump, down to the body, pump, pump, down to the body. And I can utilize this so well as a blinder. In my last fight camp, where I was prepping up for karate combat fight number two, I was working with a boxer in town and I was finding that I would just stick that hand in his face two or three times to really blind his vision and then I would find the openings. Whereas if I did things correctly, single shot, single shot, he was seeing everything and he was getting the counters off. So just being annoying with that hand led to opportunities. So break that rule of rechambering the double jab to your chin every time and start pumping it out while staying safe, you know, chin tucked, shoulder high, stay safe, pump it out a few times and see if an opportunity to the body becomes available. And the last rule I wanna talk about breaking today that will absolutely increase your boxing skills is that perception or belief that you always have to start hand combos at head level. So many people say head, 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 body head, head, body. Like throwing multiple shots up to the head will create a body opportunity and there's no other way to do it. There's no other safe way to do it because many people, when you start with the body, are worried about the counter shots. But I believe this is a limitation in the fight world. And when you can start down to the body, you will create openings up to the head. And from there you can work and then maybe finish to the body at the end. So how do we go about doing this? Well, the first thing we have to recognize is yes, starting down to the body is a little bit dangerous. And you can see as I throw a jab, I'm fairly protected to the head, I throw down to the body, less protected. So I have to do a, like just a small number of things. Maybe get my head off the center line. Maybe make sure this shoulder stays a little bit more tight and I draw my chin a little bit lower. I can also utilize footwork. Maybe I'll step off to the side as I attack or I'll fake first up to the head and then come down to the body. But in your bag work, in your sparring, play around with just stepping in, leading with the body and then following up to the head. I find, in my experience, that this is a rule and breaking it pays a lot of dividends in landing shots. Do not limit yourself head always first, down to the body, especially on things that are safe, like a jab to the body. 
that's a really easy way to throw a shot and not be compromised. Cross to the body, again, I feel really safe. Uppercut to the body or a lead hook to the body, that becomes a bit more dangerous, but I will do an episode on how to set up the lead body hook with no punches beforehand. We'll do that in the future, hopefully very soon. Overall, I hope this episode gave you some ideas on how you can improve your boxing skills while breaking rules that you might have thought were going to keep you safe or improve your skill level but are actually hindering you. If you guys enjoyed this episode, please give it a like. If you have your own requests on a video that you'd like to see me make, throw it in the comments below. If you have not already, join the channel, get subscribed. As always, guys, train hard. I will see you back here soon for another episode.